You want to angle something such as a character or a foot or any body part towards the surface. What you do is you take your hit normal, you compare it with the two vectors nodes so from two vectors. You compare your upwards direction, which is 0, 0, 1 with the hit normal to find the angle between the two and then you just multiply that by the current rotation of the foot or whatever object it is. Set the rotation, compile and when we simulate you can see that the foot's now aligned to the surface. So thanks for watching, leave a like on your way out but if you want to see more details and I'll explain how this works you can stick around. So what's going on here is the hit normal we're doing a trace from some point above the character to some point below. So this is just above the 0, 0, 0 point but you can do it above the foot if you want and then goes to below, so it finds the floor. So it finds the floor location and also the hit normal, which is the angle that the floor is facing. So in this case, it will be pointing straight up. But when it's here, the angle will be pointing out to the side. And then what we do, this from two vectors node, we take the upwards direction, because we want because it's currently the foot is pointing upwards, so we want to modify it from there. So we take the difference between the upwards direction and whatever the hit normal is, and then we multiply that with the current rotation. So what this does is it combines the two. So the way I like to think of it, because the A and B order does matter, I think of it as A applied to B. So this could be some angle offset, let's just say it's 45 degree change, applied to the existing foot rotation. And when you multiply them together and then you set the rotation, then it rotates the foot to the surface. And in case you don't believe me, I'll just move the character forward. You can see that now the foot is flat because it's above flat ground and it's still hitting the trace from there. And when it goes to the curved, it's that way. Well, the not curved, but you know what I mean. And it, this works for every angle, so it's also angling it that way. So you could put some angle limits on if you want, if you don't want it to go into any weird positions or whatever. Uh, next, what you want to do is you'll also probably want to make it so that the foot actually meets the floor because currently it's not meeting the floor, it's just getting the angle right. So that way, the next step. To make the foot reach the floor, you need to be able to actually move the foot. And the way I'm going to do that is using a basic AK now, but you could also do this if you're using full body AK, whatever you prefer. So the effector atom is the end bone, so that's going to be the foot. And then the one above that is going to be the calf bone. One above that is going to be the far bone. And then you want to set the primary and secondary axis. Um, I've covered this before, but I'll just quickly show you again. So you get the skeleton, you check the bones. So let's just check the calf L. The direction that's facing towards the floor is negative x, so we know that we want negative x as the primary axis. So it's negative 1, 0, 0. Secondary axis is the direction the knee should be facing, so you can see that's going down the y-axis, the green arrow. You can look down in the bottom left to see which uh, axis that is. So that's positive, so that's correct. Um, everything's all weird because we don't have an effector out and plugged in. For now, let's just use the existing transform of the foot. You can see it's mostly back to normal, but the pole vector is not correct. Uh, what you can do to get the pole vector, you can do compute pole vector. And this node just takes whatever the current pause is and computes a pole vector. So we're using the translation from this and plugging that into pole vector. And now we just need to take the bonds. And this matches what we've done over here with A, B and effect atom. It's called A, B, C over here for some reason. So we do phi underscore L, calf underscore L, foot underscore L. And now it's computed the pole vector, and I usually do an offset just to project it further forward. So now it's projecting the pole vector over there, and everything's back to normal. So now we can actually move the foot around by changing this effect that we've got plugged in. So as an example, if I unhook that, it's just at zero, zero, zero. So I'm not going to mess with the rotation, but let's just say we raise it up by 50 units. So you can see it's lifted the foot up. So the effect atom is the position of the foot. So all we need to do is we keep the current rotation for now keep the current translation and what we're going to do is modify some of these so for the first step we can just modify the rotation using this so we don't need this set transform anymore we can just skip over that to the compute pole vector and now you'll see that the foot is angling correctly when I simulate so that's using the base KK node that's what's causing the foot to actually angle correctly um, but it won't be aligned to the floor unless you know unless we do something else to actually move the position so now we need to figure out where the position should be to make it so that the foot's actually meeting the floor. So to make sure that the trace is actually precise, what I'm going to do is instead of just doing 0, 0, 100, which is just 0 in rig space, and then 100, which is directly below the character, I'll do it from the foot translation. So I'll just add a vector, and the vector I'm going to add is going to be 100. 
pop that into start and then I'll do another add node where I'm going to add negative 100 so it just goes below the foot and nothing will change at the moment because it's only just shifted it from there to there but if there was an angled surface here and not in the center of the character then the foot would still rotate correctly so we've got that out of the way so now we just need to modify the z height of the translation so that it meets the floor so typically he's not going to be able to meet the floor when he's too high up because he can't stretch his leg any further down but we want a situation like this to make him lift his leg upwards so that it's angled to the floor and you have to simulate for this to be running so you can see it's still angling correctly it's just that it's through the floor the way I like to do this is to use a function that I always add to most control rigs that I use where you can rotate one point around some other arbitrary point. So in our case, we'll rotate the ankle around the point of contact where the trace hits, and then that will give us a new position for the ankle. So we know how much to rotate it by because we've already calculated that. We basically just do the same, except we then rotate the bone around that point because if you imagine it's rotating around some point around here, it will be arcing. So if it was at 90 degrees for some reason, it was, you know, that was how far the foot was angled this ankle bone that's around here would swing around. So it would go lower when it goes that way, and it would be at its peak when it's straight up and go lower that way as well. So the position moves because it's rotating around some arbitrary point. So let's make a new function called rotate around point. And there is probably a simpler way that you could do this, but I use this way because I use this rotate around point function for all sorts of things. So it's always worth having it, and I've never actually put it into a YouTube video setting up this. So what we want is we want a transform, and this is what we'll be rotating. So I'll call this transform to rotate. So that's just on the inputs of this function. We also want the point to rotate around. So vector, because that's just a position, it doesn't have a rotation. Point to rotate around. And then we want a rotation amount. So for that, I'm just going to use a quaternion. So I'll just search for quat. Rotation amount. Then the output is going to be our resulting transform. So I'll we'll just make an output, and that's going to be out transform. We don't actually need the execution path, so I'll just delete the execution, and then we don't need to run an execution path through it, and we can just call that from wherever like this. And the way this function is going to be set up is we're going to take the current position and subtract the point to rotate around. So now we get an offset between the point that we're trying to rotate around, whatever we pass in, and the actual bone position. So it's just treated like from here to here, a little line. Then we're going to rotate that line. So we rotate the line using rotate vector. The amount we're going to rotate that by is going to be our rotation amount, surprisingly. And then because we've subtracted this point to rotate around, we need to add that back on after we've done the rotation. So we got it to an offset, rotated it, and then we just add this point to rotate around back on. And then that's our translation. So we could just use what we've already got here because we've got the change in the translation and we already calculated the rotation difference with all this, but it's better to just put it all into one function. So what I'm going to do is take the rotation amount, this is how much we're rotating, multiply, so that's applied to this rotation, and then that's going to be the resulting rotation. So now we can rotate anything by any amount around at any point that we give it. So for our rotate around point function, what we want is a transform to rotate, which we're going to figure out because it's not literally the foot. We need to move that first. So we're going to move it based on the hit location. So it moves the foot up or down based on where the floor is. The point to rotate around is going to be the hit location because that's what we're pivoting around. So that goes into point to rotate around. The rotation amount, we've already calculated it from this from two vectors. So if we can get rid of this multiply, I'm not using that anymore. The from two vectors, that's the difference between straight up and the hit normal. So we plug that in as the rotation amount. So that's the rotational offset. So for the translation, what we want is the hit location, which is where the trace met the floor. But the ankle bone or the foot bone is some distance above that. So we're going to need to add a value to that so that it raises it higher. Because otherwise we're trying to target the foot bone to be here and then the actual foot would be somewhere below. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to add some value to that. So we'll just take the hit location, do an add, and then we'll figure that out in a second. But for now I'll just plug that into translation. And now we should just be able to use this out transform as our effector. So we're just going to plug that straight into effector. And I'll also plug in the existing rotation from the foot so that the rotation gets correctly modified. So we'll see, we're basically back to where we were. The foot is rotating, but you can see it's under the ground because we're rotating it, treating it as if the foot bone is at the very bottom of the foot, but it's not, it's higher. So if we were to just add some value to this, let's say we do six, 
you'll see that it's raising the foot up. Not quite enough, so you could just brute force this. Type some numbers in, see what gets closest. Simulate. Okay, so that's a bit too high, so let's say it's, oh, it's probably 7.5, sure. And then you've got it pretty much land to the floor, maybe it should be 8 or something, whatever. And you can just calculate this, because the bottom of the foot should be aligned to the bottom of the skeletal mesh, so basically zero, zero, zero. So what you can do is you could just get the transform here, the transform Z of the foot bone is actually how much we want to add to this. So we can just pop that in. If you're using some different mesh where for some reason the foot isn't actually aligned to the bottom of the skeletal mesh, so it's not at zero, 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 then, well, you, you should fix that. But in case you are, you might have to just tap in numbers or calculate it some other way. Uh, but in our case, if we simulate now, we'll see that it's meeting the floor. And that will be the case if I move him anywhere up or down until it gets to the point where it can't reach anymore. And once again, we can rotate the character around and you'll see that his foot is angled to the floor. It works when angled up and so on. And you can add limits in. So just as an example, if you had some surface like this and you didn't want it to be, uh, oh, I'm simulating, so I can't move it. Let's say that it was angled in some extreme way I mean, the character probably couldn't walk on this, so they'd just slide off, probably, unless you had some change to the uh, max angle, max Z angle that you can walk on. But you'll see that, you know, the foot is quite unnatural. So in situations like this, you'd probably want to not allow the foot to rotate that much and push it outwards, but that's a bit more complicated. Just don't have surfaces like this in your game. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, leave a comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Bye-bye.